So Lee, thanks for coming today. My um, pleasure. What I love about you is very early on in your career, even when Man Repeller was just a blog before you became sort of this household name and powerhouse, you were the trailblazer for injecting dynamic conversation in the fashion dialogue. Was that something you intentionally did? It kind of just happened in a very intentional way. My motivation in fashion has always been trying to understand the psychology, theory, philosophy of it. You know, it's never been about just putting clothes on my body because I want to look good. It's been about making a decision to present myself in a certain way to tell a story that where I think words might fail. And so in that way, fashion is really interesting and compelling for me because it's so much more than just the clothes that we use to cloak our bodies. It's the stories that we tell. It's the opinions that we try on. It's the identities that we assume. And I really wanted to inject that part of the conversation into what's happening in the larger fashion stratosphere. When we first met, it was kind of like Man Repeller was a blog, it was just you, you mm -hmm. didn't have a whole team, it was your voice, you were trying on the fashions, you were commenting on things. What's the transition been like since Man Repeller has become a household name and you've become such a style icon, finding that new voice? It's been a pretty profound challenge. At this point in my life, at this juncture, it's more important for me to serve this opinion forward because I really do believe that we're doing something incredibly important for the conversation. We're intellectualizing fashion, we're not minimizing a woman's interest in fashion. Just because a woman wants to talk about her shoes doesn't mean she can't also be interested in the political climate and foreign policy and like what's happening in our world right. today. And right. I think that's a really, really important conversation to have. I don't want anyone to feel like they can't look nice because it's going to diminish their intellect. What's the challenge like becoming such a successful individual on so many different fronts. You're constantly getting these opportunities to not only like collaborate on products with other brands while also maintaining sort of your businesswoman mindset. How do you struggle and, and find that balance in curating your content? Well, there are two answers, right? Number one is that no is a much more powerful response than yes is. So knowing when to step back and not to allow yourself to feel like you're being spread extremely, extremely thin. If you stop doing the things that you're passionate about, the things that initially motivated you to create, you're gonna burn out. Everything's gonna start to feel stale. You truly owe it to yourself to work on things that get you excited to get out of bed in the morning. We live in a capitalist city and you know, I'm so much of the motivation of anyone living here is quote unquote making it so that you can afford the quality of life. You just can't forget about actually Enjoying living that time. quality of life. Right. On a totally lighter note, if I were to walk into your closet right now, what's the designer that I would probably see the most of? Rosie Asulin, for sure. It seems to me, as someone that met you in the same way as Rosie, our, our, our business relationship was based on friendship first and foremost. Yes that that continues to be a huge source of inspiration for you, that you celebrate the ones that you love and the pieces that they create and you become a part of their yes, story. Yes, absolutely. That's, I think you hit the nail on the head with that. I've never actually articulated that. Did I just say something you did. really profound? Yeah, you did. It's really true. And I always say that a good designer makes you feel like they're hugging you right. with their I clothes. I wear Rosie and I feel like I'm carrying a piece of her around with me. And she's been one of my closest friends since I was 17. And so that's like a really, really special experience to have. and in many ways I feel that way when I'm wearing your jewelry because I know you guys as friends. Side note, in terms of any trends that you absolutely hate that you just cannot get behind. I try not to hate trends because I feel like every trend has its moment in time and Do you like Crocs? facilitates, helps to tell a story later. Like we're going to talk about the Croc day oh. 10 years from now and it's going to be fun. Um, Do you wear Crocs? I, one time I wore them for a man repeller story where we did a Croc diet. Amelia and I did it together and I forced her to walk into the Celine store wearing them. I was like, you have to go in there and like ask to see a bag. Thanks for coming. It's always a pleasure to see you. Oh, I'll do anything I can to see you. That's so sweet. Can I burp you just so we can have like a little, oh, God, a little closure here it till next time? Oh, oh, she's gonna make me burp right now. Uh, I did it. <laughs>